At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, I'm excited because we're welcoming one of our practitioners, Jesse Nelson, with us. And he is an amazing astrologer. He's also a wonderful tarot reader. He's a music artist, you know, among many other things in this beautiful creative world of uh, spirituality and creativity. But we're today we're going to be talking about uh, perspective through astrology, also getting to know who Jesse is, what type of readings he does. Does, all that fun jazz, you know how it goes. We start one place and it leads us every place. So welcome, Jesse. Thank you for coming today. Thank you, Christina, for having me on Liberate the Podcast. I'm very excited to be here. We're excited to have you. Thank you. So um, since this is your first time being a guest on, on the podcast, I always like to for people to learn a little bit about, you know, kind of your origin into spirituality. Where did you start? How did you dive into both tarot and astrology, you know, and, you know, all of that jazz? Ooh, the journey, the journey. Let's the see. journey, the journey, yes. Um, it's interesting. I was raised uh, pretty conservatively, actually. So okay. um, like a pretty strict uh, Christian upbringing, which it gave me, I think, a lot of valuable sort of background and understanding and, and perspective and morals and ethics and, and whatnot. Um, but the spirituality, as I embody it and feel it now, came a little bit later. There was a way okay. where I was very curious. I, I definitely remember, I, I would say, starting around high school, I was very into other schools of spirituality and philosophy and understanding. And that was when I first started to dip my toe in. One of my childhood best friends got her first deck of tarot cards. And ah. I was like, ooh, ooh. You're like, what is this <laughs> what magic? What is this? I love this. And then it was actually... Uh, I went to a hippie college, I went to Evergreen, uh, which is, you know, tarot and astrology are just uh, everywhere, behind every door. Oh, really? And it was amazing. Yeah, so I had my first chart reading from my first roommate, um, who's uh, David, David Wood, who's an incredible evolutionary astrologist to this day. Um, but yeah, they gave so, me my- so, you're, you're, so you go, you know, you grow up conservative, you, you know, had your first introductory to even Terrell was one of your friends in high school. She gets a stack and you're like, okay, what is this? And then you end up at this college and your dorm mate, you know, her roommate is an astrologer and it's like, let me do your chart. Yes. And so you have your first chart done. And what did you think of it? I was like, no, oh, that's cool. You know what? I mean, he was really into it. It was just so much fun. Every every person, he was like, what's your sign? Let's look at your chart. Like, he just loved it. Uh-huh. Um, so was it something that blew your mind or was just something that was kind of interesting to you and you were like, kind of put it on, uh, pinned it in it, you know? And like, yeah. this is interesting, but you know. Yeah. I was kind of like, oh, okay. Like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but it didn't, it, it, it didn't quite click all the way yet. Okay. And then around that same time, yeah, like close friends started getting our own little decks of tarot cards and we just would just kind of play and like learn and explore. And, you know, we could, we didn't really know anything. We'd have to like go through the booklets and just be like, oh, what is three of cups? What does that mean? But it was just exciting. It was yeah. just this exciting world that we were all like all taken with. Nice. Yeah. And then, so where did that start to study it more deeply you know like where did you take that and did you you know have any other kind of uh esoteric experiences happen where it kind of mm. opened you up a little bit more to say okay there's maybe a little bit more to this world absolutely absolutely i would say um one of the really big so shortly after i graduated from college uh my dad passed and that was a definitely a really big spiritual opening in the sense of just feeling very close to the okay. other side, feeling very close to the celestial. And um, yeah, it, it's hard to explain, but uh, I think people who've been through will know what I mean. Like there's a way where when you go through that kind of coming of age experience and that kind of challenge, there's a way where energetically you do feel things shift and you feel things open. Mm -hmm. And I remember that at that time, I was just like, what, what can I be open to to support me at this time? And I remember shortly after I went and I got my first few uh, decks of cards from my local magic shop, the Crystal Fox in Lowell, <laughs> Maryland. Shout out. And um, that 
was, yeah. And again, I still didn't really know what I was doing, but I was just kind of looking, I was looking for something. You were looking for answers. You were feeling that like that space or that void, right? Yes. You know, yes. which oftentimes I, I find that that's, you know, sometimes people have this experience where they start hearing things or seeing things or ha they have some other type of uh, something that shakes their model and they dive in. And sometimes it's, it's oftentimes it is a loss that, that takes somebody by surprise that happens maybe when somebody passes away a little young, you yeah. know, and, and then it's like, okay, well, what else is there? What is this all about? You know, when that diving into the meaning answers, searching, you know, yes. and so you started doing that mm. and, you know, what was it about tarot that you really enjoyed? It's so interesting. Honestly, it was so many things. I loved the mystery. I loved the, um, just the ways in which it's this whole language. It's this whole world. You know, every card, when I explain it to people, I'm like, every card is like a word, you know, in language. And then depending on how mm -hmm. the cards come out, it's like it changes the, the syntax or the structure, or the context of the sentence or the paragraph of the story. Mm. Uh, and I just, I think I loved that it was just this world. And similarly, I, I so I, I would say that I grew in them kind of in tandem, but they did take turns, I think, playing a little bit more of a role in my life. But okay. there was like very much a tandem uh, happening of, of like exploring them together. Um, and I think what I loved about both of them was there was this way where it just kind of felt like this infinite world mm -hmm. of, that goes deeper and deeper. And even now, you know, over 10 years in of, of study, that's still what I love about tarot and astrology. Yeah. It's just like I love the art and the imagery and the interpretation and just always learning more and, and gaining such valuable perspective and support and inspiration and, and guidance. Yeah, through those tools. Yeah. And how both of those tools have, you know, been around for such a long time, <laughs> you know, you know, some people will say even to the beginning of modern civilization and or, you know, to that group of, you know, maybe even before that. But, you know, uh, you know, you have tarot decks that date back to the 1400s and, and earlier than that, you know, there's, there's it said that they or, originated in Egypt and astrology, you know kings and queens and you know old empires used to use astronomy to you know even to pick wars and when was a good time to invade and you know looking at that and i think almost every single president except for maybe a couple of the last ones and i don't know if even the last ones had uh you know but definitely during the bush administration and, and previously they they would have astrologers that that were commissioned to look at different dates and different things along those lines and a lot of people don't know this you know it's like kind of like this like you know, uh, very um, ancient, but still effective, pro, uh, pro proactive, pro productive way of looking at things today. And it has like, you know, it's, it's survived all of the different changes in society because it resonates to, it, it resonates so deep and it has so much truth, right? Yes. You know, um, and, you know, you can see that. Right. When you're doing readings and stuff like people relate, like it doesn't matter what cards get brought up. People can relate yes. to the metaphors, to the meaning, to how that is impacting one of their many facets, their challenges and their journey. Right. Absolutely. And and so what is it about astrology that that, you know, so we heard about like you got this tarot deck, you got it at, at this little store in Maryland and you, you bought your first deck. You know, you had your first introduction to it in high school. But then where, where did you, um, you know, you had your first chart reading when you were in, in college, but where did you say, okay, I want to start learning this. I want to start like actually like looking at the different planets and the, you know, what the rising and the moon, you know, like when did that interest start? Yes. Oh, great question. Um, and yeah, to your point, it, it, I always loved it, found it fascinating. I loved the lens, loved the lens, um, but I would say, honestly, like as the way spirituality and metaphysics and esoteric works with a lot of us, it was when I was in, I was in the dark, you know, mm. um, my Saturn return was relentless, would not wish it upon anyone. Um, and that it kind of just took being pushed like I, I had nothing. And I was like looking for, I just needed guidance. I needed hope. I needed mm -hmm. inspiration. And I would say full circle, that's why I've 
that's definitely what deepened. As much as I, I loved and I found those, me those mediums fascinating before, it really took being pushed to this place of like, yeah, just feeling like I was just barely hanging on and like finding something that could really offer me um, guidance, support, inspiration, and largely hope. Mm. Largely hope. And so yeah. that was 2018. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a that's a big thing that both like readings and ast astrology readings, tarot readings give is they give that higher perspective of hope. It's almost like this that whatever you're going through, this is temporary because we see it right here, and this is where you're going. So there mm -hmm. is a change that happens, right? And you can see that in your chart. Sometimes you can see that in the spread that happens, and so. You know, you're in this this darker night of the soul. Now, you mentioned a terminology that some people might know, um, but I want I want to go into it a little bit deeper, uh, just so people understand what that what is meant by that and in what period that is. But you mentioned the word Saturn return. Okay, so um, through your explanation, how would you describe that? Ooh, ooh, you know, everyone's is a little different. And again, it, it's this yeah. is what makes astrology so interesting is it's very much placed on like where Saturn is in your chart by house, by sign, by aspect. Um, I have a very rigorously placed Saturn. Uh, it is in Capricorn. It's sign of rulership in the first house conjunct my ascendant. And for what that might sound like alien script. Um, so to explain that, that's basically like being the principal's kid, the sheriff's kid. There's this way where it's like, feeling like you just, a lot of it is, ex is expected of you and you can't get away with very much. Mm. So uh, there is a, which again makes sense with my childhood and like even having that perspective of looking at my chart and being like, oh, I'm not crazy. I can see energetically why I incarnated with the experiences that are very specific that I had to yeah. shape me and, and that understanding. But um, also the, so the Saturn return is roughly ages 26 to 30. It's where Saturn, it's moved through the whole zodiac at this point and it has now come back and I, there's a, a couple of Saturn returns in an, in an average lifespan um, if we're looking at you know going into older age so you have another one in your like late 50s to early 60s but the first big one that happens roughly 26 to 30 is yeah very much like the big coming of age transit it's very much a shedding of childhood and basically testing not only everything that you kind of learned all the programming of your childhood and your adolescent and early adult years but very much preparing you to be an adult for the rest of your life. Yeah. 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 So beautifully said. <laughs> I always heard of it as 28 to 30, but 26 to 30, I guess if, you know, you look at different, you know, where it's starting mm -hmm. to come in. But with that being said is, is, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, it's, it's the, that blueprint in the sky of where you were born is coming back around again. Absolutely. And so it's your whole uh, cycle. And, and so it's a closing of one cycle and then the opening of another. Right? And so said. most people will hear, you know, the, the Saturn return is often described about as like the 28 to, or 26 to the, the 30, like you described it, uh, that period of time. Um, and then I think most people will hear of the terminology midlife crisis, which would be right in that time period of where, you know, uh, it, it happens for the second time around the sun. Exactly. And so, you know, these shifts, these coming of age, this changing from one identity to the next, it's, you know, the more I see, it's, it's, it's this awakening into who you really are. And so it was right on point for you. It's like shifting things away, pulling it away. And then, and then you're like, okay. And then you, you found answers, you found hope, you found inspiration. I did. And then you continued to dive into it. Say, what more? And then when did you start, like, actually, you know, like, saying, I want to help other people do this? Or was that all the time as you were doing it? You were doing readings and things for other people while you were exploring and... and... That's a great question. I, it's funny because, honestly, I was a little stubborn about it. Mm. Um, there was a way in which I was... So I moved to L.A. to do music. Um, I'll, you know, singer, songwriter, musician is what brought me to the City of Angels. Um, and there was a way where I was a little stubborn about it. And mm. I was like, this is all that I can be and all that I could do. And I, I would do little other things for friends, but I just, I had this apprehension to taking it seriously. And then it was a close friend of mine who's also uh, an amazing singer, songwriter, musician, but who is an intuitive medium, psychic channel who started her own mystery school, um, Kate Faust of the Sound Spirit. Uh, she was the one who was like, you really need to take this seriously. And it was also at this point, again, I'm, I'm, I'm coming out of the worst 
parts of my Saturn return, but definitely still in it. And um, she was like, you're, you're great at this. Like you need money. Um, like you should take this seriously. Yeah. And it was that sort of, and I was like, again, I was just so stubborn, like, oh, but I'm this, but I'm that. And she was like, yes, and. And I'm so yes, grateful. Yes, and. To, and I'm so See? grateful to her for that because it's so, to this day, I'm like, yes, and. Yes, I can be all of these things and, and embrace that I'm still learning and still open to all that is to come. That's so beautiful. So many people, like, I hope that, you know, as, as people are listening, um, I, I see it so much that we pigeonhole ourselves. Yes. We say, we're this person or we're this way or because we're this way we create these rules we create these guidelines we create these really strict rigid boundaries and some of it is to serve us in some way but then you have to you know you can say okay well maybe i need to be really committed to this in order to manifest it in order to create it in order to take it seriously but then i realize that you can be everything yeah and tomorrow can be something different than today. And that's the beauty of ever changing reality. It's like, you know, who's to say that somebody can't be blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I think it's coming from that paradigm or that perspective from, you know, years ago where one person, and this is like parents, maybe parents, definitely my parents. I don't know, you know, like your parents or like, but definitely the older generation's parents, parents, one job, one company, their whole life, one house, one, one, one environment they grew up in. Right. Absolutely. You know, and it was very much like where you go, that's where you go. You know, you're, you know, you work for an automotive company, you work from there until you retire in pension. You, you, you know, you are a shoe repair person. You do it from the start to the end of your life. That's like your specialty. That's it. That's all you do, you know, and there isn't this expansion. And, and some of that kind of belief systems and old patterning stick with us, but it's not that way anymore. Absolutely. You know, it's like the average person changes how many careers, not even jobs in their lifetime, but they can be, you know, an amazing astrologer and amazing musician, like, yeah. and an amazing gardener and an amazing, like, you know, whatever, yeah. right? Yes. <laughs> and they can decide that they also want to be an amazing attorney and then it can be everything yes. can happen, you know, like yes. it, it, it doesn't need to be one. And I think that that's like because we are so much more than any one little detail of us. Right. Yes. And the more that we expand and we realize this capability to grow at any time, to learn new things at any time, to expand our awareness. Right. Mm. Which is one of the things that. I think is so valuable with astrology and one of the biggest topics that you wanted to talk about today was the perception through astrology. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one, you know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. So do you want to explain a little bit more about what you mean by that and, and how astrology can really shift perspectives? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, and yeah, and kind of going back, I suppose, to that, that Saturn return era where I was really needing something. Mm -hmm. That was, I would say, the first time when I really started to go deep with my chart in the sense of, yes, I'd seen it before, but I was really, I really wanted to see it. I really wanted to understand. I really wanted to comprehend. And getting that perspective was, to this day, one of the most illuminating and liberating experiences of my life. Um, just again, just this way of getting to understand how energy was working and what I was born with and and just being able to be like, I'm not crazy. I'm not yeah. crazy. Um, I've felt these things. I've understood these things. I've seen how energy works for me because that's a big thing, right? As individuals, we can see how we have different experiences and not just in terms of like, you know, the tangible 3D sense, but even energetically things, different things happen and things work differently for us and yeah. we see the world differently. And so I feel like astrology was such an incredible lens to understand what that was for me and to like celebrate that and affirm that and yeah, own it. Wow. Yeah. And what specifically stood out to you when you were really diving in for your own person, personal, like, you know, like, was there mm. something specific in your chart or through your experience that, you know, like you can kind of share that was like, wow, this just like blew me open. And that's why it was this for me. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I mean, so many things. No, yeah, so, many things. <laughs> so many things, but I mean, if there's a couple, you know, like if yeah. there was like this, like, aha, you know, like, you know, like I've heard, I've heard, I've heard so many different, you know, but I want to. Yeah, totally. Thank you. Um, I would say one of the big ones, and this actually goes back to, so like I said, my college roommate was the first person to show my chart. And then a friend of mine, um, one of the first friends I made when I moved to LA was like the second person to show me my chart. And I remember her saying, oh, your life is really hard. And I was yeah. like, what do you mean? <laughs> I later would understand what she meant. Um, but yeah, just so I specifically have a four planet stellium conjunction in Capricorn and Capricorn conjunct my ascendant, which is basically just including Saturn, the ruling planet, which is basically just a lot of striving, a lot of work, a lot of resilience required. Um, mm. Very much a steadfast, stick to insane patience. Saturn and, and Capricorn together rule time. So there's a way where you just have to be patient and you have to trust the process and stay very resilient and sort of focused and steadfast. You know, the goat climbing the mountain. Mm. But there's a way where that energy has just been very forward in my life. And sometimes it's exhausting, but like, again, seeing my birth chart and being like, oh, I'm not insane. I'm not making this up. I can see that this is such a forward part of my experience and what I am meant to do. And, and I can lean into the idea, the, the knowing, the trust that this is ultimately meant to serve me. Interesting. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I think that that's, if you see that yeah. in your chart, it's like, you know, so there's sometimes we can, a lot of people, including myself at certain times, we can fall, fall into the role of victim, yes. right? And fall into the poor me, why is this happening to me type of situation. And in that perspective, we don't see how something can serve us. Um, we don't take responsibility. And we mean it to be like there's something wrong with us, like we did something wrong or to deserve or to have or whatnot. Yeah. And then when you can take yourself a step back and what I'm hearing is that you had a very hard life, very difficult challenges where mm. it caused you to have a lot of resilience, a lot of, um, you said, you know, like stamina or pushing through or that kind of energy, but it was like, feeling like you needed to keep on dragging yourself through the mud and you're like, well, you know, some people might just say, hey, put their hands up and be like, well, you know, a lot, a lot of times when people have that type of life, maybe they turn to the bottle or they turn to different types of substances that say, hey, you know, let me escape this because this is too difficult or I don't want to be in this. But, you know, when you see it as like, wait, this was already predestined. This is part of this. And then you say, okay, well, if this is part of this, and this is supposed to be one of my life challenges. That means that I'm supposed to be learning something for this. So that this isn't necessarily happening to cause me to suffer, but it's happening to help me grow. Yes. And when you're in that period of perspective and you say, okay, well, this, it's already here. This is, you know, this is outlined in a chart, <laughs> you know, like, and it's describing my life, right? You know, and it's so like, you know, yeah. maybe this is okay. And maybe this is yeah. happening for me, not to me. And, yeah. and it gives people that perspective of it's going to be okay, mm. you know? Mm. And then there's, then in that perspective, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just, this is the hand that you were dealt to teach you something because this was, the moment that you decided to come into this world, right? Yes, exactly. and, and, and so that can be really helpful, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Can be helpful in so many different ways. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not an astrologer, but I know a couple of times when people have looked at my chart or something like that, and they're like, you have really difficult placement in relationships, or you have this, or, you know, mm. like, you know, I see you know, legal issues in your, in your chart and different things. I'm like, okay, okay. Well, it was predestined. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just feel a little better, right? You yeah. Know, like, and, and you also like can see that you, in, in that, and with some different charts and placement stuff, you can also look at a little bit ahead of time and you can see all oh, that moves out of that cycle so that there's yes. some reprieve or breathing period that's going to happen. And then sure enough, like clockwork, it starts to happen. <sighs> Uh, and and it's, it's, yes. it's kind of like amazing and shocks me to this day because I'm like, I'm one of those people that, you know, even though I have metaphysical stories and, you know, I, I'm into all the stuff, like I'm constantly always that skeptic and I'm like, 
you know, like uh, Re Rebecca, who's worked with us for years, will be like, you know, I, I went into like the Liberate Hollywood signing our lease out of Venus and Mercury retrograde. And then I wondered why it was all falling apart all the time. And, and, and she's like, maybe you should listen now. And then I'm like, come on, it can't be that. And, you know, like, I'm just signing a document, you know, like, but then things happen or sure enough, every time Mercury comes around and is in retrograde, I'm like, including right now. Yeah. It's including right now, but whenever you watch it, it might be a also, nod, but, uh, but, uh, I'm always like the most productive I've ever been. And I'm like, mm. I actually thrive in Mercury retrogrades, but like, I feel like the shift and change, I won't even know that it's went into it. And I'll be like, do, 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 let's get the two loodus now. And all this other energy and like clockwork, people from my past get reach out. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, this can't be a coincidence. You know, like there's something else to this. Like every time, like even when I'm not paying attention, it's not like a self-fulfilling prophecy where I'm like manifesting or intending it to be. It's like, I'm completely oblivious. And then the self, and then I'm like, I wonder, I wonder. Oh, yep. Sure enough. <laughs> yep. Right there. It's energy, you know, and that's such a valuable thing that I, I I'm so glad you, you brought that up that way of which. It's a beautiful tool. It's a beautiful tool. And ultimately it is the means to explore energy, you know, which we, we yeah. all believe in here, you know, and science has proven if we, even if we just want to look at it as, you know, the laws of thermodynamics, like energy is real. Yeah. Energy is real. It is. It is. And it's when, you know, like when, when you're looking at, you know, doing people's charts also mm. like, you know, tarot readings is, is, is a pretty easy time to like say, when should you get a reading? It's like, whenever you feel like you need guidance and clarity, right? But when do you think it's it's best for people to come in and, you know, do a chart reading and, and look into their astrology? That's a great question. I, I mean, there's definitely, I would say there's a number of times. I mean, the like doing the solar return thing. So for your birthday, that mm -hmm. could be a great time to kind of look at what's going on for you now, what's coming up in the next year until your next birthday. Um, or definitely if you're, if you're wanting to look into like, what could be the best time for me? Cause so again, astrology is, it's such a, a science and art of timing. So mm. like, what is the best time for me to maybe do this thing or what might not be the best time to do these things, you know? And, and again, not to let astrology completely, you know, run the show and, and, and hold us back and restrict us. But again, just exploring what might be a more supportive time, you know, and yeah. how, where can I be aware, you know, and just kind of like forecast for the weather of like, maybe this is a less supportive time. So I would definitely say, yeah, if you're, if you're looking to make sort of big decisions, or if you're looking for guidance in terms of um, supportive energies and timing with doing things. Um, and then also, if you're just feeling called, um, you know, if you're feeling called, and then there was something else I was thinking. Definitely, again, I mean, I, not that I would ever wish my Saturn return on anyone, but just, but it was that dark night, you know? Yeah. So if you're, you know, if you're, if you're looking for something, okay. you know, I think it could be a valuable, a valuable lane to explore. And sure, maybe not everyone's going to resonate, but it, yeah, saved my life and changed my life. So I'll always go to bat. Oh, I love that. Thank so you. pretty much I hear, you know, four times, so of course, anytime, you know, but you know, if you're feeling called to it and there's some curiosity that there's that might be part of your higher self or there might be some yes. message or in it, um, you know, I always believe wherever you're guided, there's always a reason for it, especially if it's a tug at you for whatever reason. You, you know, it might be what you think. It might be completely different than what you think, but it's calling you forward for some reason. Right. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, like that, those times of the, those dark nights are seeking from a answers, getting some, looking at that perspective, like you were saying, and, and birth, birth, birth charts, you know, like, or like forecasts on, onto that future, the timing. I really want to go back onto that, what you said with the timing and mm -hmm. about how not to have astrology rule your life, but be like that kind of weather forecast. And while you were thinking that, if like the idea in my head that popped in, it was like, okay, I guess you can go on vacation anytime. But if you're looking to go to a tropical beach location, you know, if there's supposed to be a thunderstorm that's happening or it's a really rainy season, it might not be the best time to go, but it doesn't mean that you can't go and you can still have fun. You know, you just might have to adapt a little bit. And maybe that that beach experience that you were seeking to have <laughs> might be, you know, an indoor pool experience instead. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
you know, and you can be, you could prepare for it, you know, you versus know? getting there and being like, oh, it's like, okay, maybe it wasn't ideal, but you knew on some level, you knew. You know? Yeah, you're going in during monsoon season and you're thinking that you're going to be laying on the beach having a, a coconut, you know, and but maybe you're laying inside the hotel with a coconut. <laughs> exactly. Just staring at the raindrops, the torrential downpour, which can also be beautiful in its own it can, way. can, but it might not be what you were expecting. <laughs> Absolutely but... <laughs> not. not. And certainly not what you were hoping for. But there it is. Oh. Oh. But I like that because mm. it's like that forecast, like that, you know, again, doesn't mean that you can't do it. Doesn't mean that things won't be great. Doesn't mean that you might not have an amazing experience. It just might mm. not be the exact experience that you were intending. Exactly. And I, th I love that you brought up the signing the lease on the Venus Mercury retrograde, which <laughs> is, I mean, but the thing is, is it's not, it's sometimes you can't help it. Like I, I recently moved into a place and I had to sign during a Mercury retrograde. And so it's not, even if it's not necessarily the most supportive, it's again, it's, you still got to do what you got to do. So like the kind of, the rule would be like, just recheck it, recheck it a couple of times, maybe, you know, read the fine print a little bit closer. Um, just, you know, maybe go that extra step to operate with a little bit more intention. But when it comes down to it, you still got to do what you got to do. So it's not like yeah, a wrong life, thing or a bad thing. Life yeah. still happens. Exactly. But at exactly. least if you're, you know, dotting your I's and crossing your T's, you can make things are, or preparing, right? You know, maybe you just really, that's the only time you like going back to the weather thing. Maybe that's the only time you can get away. And, you know, <laughs> so you're away. It's just, you know, and you it work is, with what you got. <laughs> you work with what you got, you know. That tropical paradise turned into a monsoon. But, you know, it is what it is. At least it's a vacation, you know. Yeah. yeah. I love it. And, I and I know oftentimes you combine astrology with tarot. I do. I do. And so what, what are those sessions kind of like? Yeah, they're really fun. I, because I, again, I love both so much and, and I find so much magic in both and, uh, I feel like it's a really good way to, because, you know, sometimes when people come in, they maybe have more experience with one or the other, they're more comfortable with one, or they just know one better. And so I basically just try to offer a comprehensive, sort of more, yeah, all-encompassing holistic approach to what might be going on. So a lot of the times, like, for example, as an astrologer, it is part of my job to kind of know what's going on in the mm. sky and, like, kind of know what energy I'm working with, because I'm experiencing it too, you know? Yeah. Um, it's not just this, like, third person, almost anthrop apologist thing it's like I'm in it too I'm here yeah. too you know and so there's a way where I can talk about it in that very person-to-person -person way of like yeah this Mercury square to Saturn it's it's slowing things down it's making it tough to know what I want it's making it tough to communicate it's making it tough to mobilize on the things I want to do or or yeah this Mercury retrograde huh like it's really made traveling and and taking the bus and driving a little bit more annoying huh you know <laughs> and just being able to offer that very human connective insight of like yeah, you know, just kind of like, this is what might be going on right now. This is what you might be feeling. Mm -hmm. This is also what might have been some of the energetic promptings that brought you in today. I love yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you. And, and uh, Jesse, um, where can people find you on your, on your personal social? Uh, <laughs> you know, of course, you can find him on Liberate for a booking. And I hope that, you know, through his lighthearted, playful energy mm -hmm. and expansive approach, you know, maybe he can help you guide you through a difficult time or just you know even give you insight on what's to come for you giving you clarity over you know your life or certain perspectives or certain decisions that you need to make um just to give you more resources so you have better tools so that you can make those appropriate decisions that you want with just a tad bit more information right um but you know you i know you also have an instagram what is it it's at drifter shape shifter one word as it sounds as it's spelt so just at drifter shape shifter yeah. awesome thank you thank you so much jesse is there anything else that you would want to leave everybody with uh i just want to say thank you so much for having me christina Aww. it's been a pleasure and joy being a reader at liberate and being coming a part of this family and i just wish everyone hope and and lightness through you know these times that can be challenging and dense i wish people hope light and inspiration and that you can find it in the most beautiful and mysterious and miraculous of places oh i love that well thank you everybody for joining um please like comment subscribe you know, we're trying to get our YouTube up a little bit more and the video counts really sucking. So if you could help us 
if you're already listening to this on uh, iTunes or Spotify or anything like that, still comments help more people uh, hear us, uh, be one of those great podcasts that more people find and listen to. Um, and if you're listening to this, check out our, our video one on YouTube, just so we can b- build that traction a little bit more. Thank you. Until next time, have a beautiful day. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, Also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, U-R-S-E-L-F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.